Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. I'm down at Kearney Planners today, uh, catching up with Colin Tinline. Uh, Colin, how's it going? Good. Well, Good. This is video number two of the day. We finished <laughs> up our corn video. We're working hard today. And now we're going to talk about soybeans. And a question for you. I mean, we tend to spend a lot of time focusing on prepping the corn planter. You know, do we do enough time prepping for soybeans? That's a great question. Uh, as planter specialists, I guess, here at, at Kearney's, we, we tend to think that the details matter, but uh, I think sometimes maybe things get overlooked if we're in a very busy spring and, and, and we got the corn crop in the ground and, and with uh, full day soybeans now, sometimes we're trying to do both at the same time. When it comes to soybeans, are there two or three things that we really should be focusing on, you know, when, when we got corn off our mind? Well, uh, you know, all of our normal chat chat about basic maintenance aside, uh, today I'd like to touch a little bit on coulters and a common question about trash wheels on narrow rows. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we'll do a little chat on checking on our electronics and the uh, ever confusing world of closing wheels. <laughs> Let's get to it. Yeah, so up first this time, uh, it seems to be a common question we get quite often here and it's, it's uh, maybe up for debate with some people, but I guess uh, it's of, of my opinion that, that, that this is the way things work. And it's uh, no-till coulters versus trash wheels and, and how that's going to work. Uh, there's lots of options, uh, lots of different configurations. Uh, you know, if you're planting soybeans perhaps on 30-inch rows, none of this really applies to you. But uh, the narrower the row, the more trouble we seem to have uh, with trash and with trash wheels. Um, like I said, there's several options. There's, there's single arm versions, there's, there's narrow versions, there's short arm versions. 15 inches and under, we seem to run into a problem with these uh, due to trash flow. You know, we can put narrow gauge wheels on, we can do a lot of things, but, but eventually what it comes down to is we're pushing trash from one row into the other. But as far as the coulter is concerned, uh, we firmly believe it to be a necessity. Uh, takes stress off the seed blades. Uh, gives a little more mellow path to the surface. Uh, when we run into problems though is, is with maintenance and keeping them adjusted. The majority of these things have way too much adjustment in here as far as, far as I'm concerned. Uh, some of them even, you know, a couple of inches or more. And, and this is a 16 inch blade brand new and with, with this lower notch here we could, we could essentially run this thing down into the 12 and a half, 13 inch range. And that's, that's, you know, that's way too small. Uh, what we need to think about is the blade is very thin here at the edge, and as we move towards the center, the blade gets thicker. So as we wear that blade down, we're not sharp anymore. Our cutting edge is gone, and, and we start hairpinning the trash into the trench, essentially, instead of cutting it and clearing the way. So we want to make sure we, we adjust these down as the blade wears, but also at some point, and in the case of this 16 inch blade, at 15 and a half inches, our cutting edge here is gone and we should be replacing this. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is sometimes people adjust it down, new to you planter maybe, you don't, uh, you don't think about that, you put a new blade on, now we're way too low. We never want these below the seed trench. In fact, you know, quarter inch to three eighths of an inch somewhere in there above the seed trench is, is definitely recommended. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is these come in different patterns. This is a, a 13 wave here and it has a three quarter inch cut. If you're in tougher ground, you might consider a, a bubble or, or a 28 wave, which, you know, a 28 wave has a five eighths inch cut. Um, and that's also important to keep these things maintained. Next topic I'd like to just briefly touch on here is, is an oldie but a goodie, I guess we'll say. Uh, physical population counts. Um, it's a simple check. It always pays and uh, it costs nothing but a little time. And uh, so I guess the next thing to keep in mind is if you call us with a, with a population issue, this is the first thing you're going to get asked on the telephone is have you performed this test? So we'll just do a quick rundown on it here. Um, on a 30 inch row, for instance, we're talking about 17 foot 5 inches and on a 15 inch row, we double that at 30 foot 4 foot 10 inches. And basically what we're measuring is one one thousandth of an acre. We're going to raise our depth stop all the way to the shallowest position, remove the pressure from our closing wheels, tie the closing wheel up, drive our distance, um, and then the tough part of counting the seeds. And whatever we count, we're going to multiply that by 10. 
and, and that's going to tell us our, our physical population count. Uh, I'd recommend verifying that two or three times. Once we've done that, we will know exactly what we're planting. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is, unfortunately, the books aren't always 100% with the rate charts. Sometimes we might be one or two settings up or down to, to get where we want to. The other thing to keep in mind is we can um, maneuver the gains in the monitors to read exactly what you're seeing at the back end. So if you're like me and you, you must see on the monitor what, what we're actually doing, then that's also possible. And knowing the difference is the way to get there. Also, for guys with clutches and electric drives, uh, we'd already be set up in this case to check our on-off time delays for in and out of headlands. Since we just finished talking about population counts, I just want to touch a quick second on, on filling the planter and, and seed handling. Large portion of the issues we run into uh, are from split seed. They, they build up in the brushes, they, they plug off or, or they get pulled through vac plates. A lot of times when we clean out the manifolds on these things, they're, they're just full in the ends of split seed. Handling of the split seed, you know, the best practice might be bags, which are exhausting, especially in a, a central fill planter like this, or, or a belt, which, you know, is, is best practice. But augers are economical, they're readily available. Uh, you just would make one warning that we want to run those as full as possible and as slow as possible. And the only other thing that comes into mind with, uh, with seed handling is the treatments. Uh, some people now are applying their own seed treatments and that's fine. We just want to make sure that those are very well incorporated, that some of these more liquefied versions are, are dry. And remember, when we're loading the planters, graphite is our friend. And on the super humid days, uh, a little bit of talc powder goes a long way as well. Uh, one more thing about, uh, about planting beans here with the seed, and, and it may be a little bit Kinsey specific, even though these meters fit on other, other models as well. Um, the mechanical meters, especially the brush meters, require uh, very close attention to seed size as far as selecting the right plate. What we need to remember, you know, the Kinsey Black 60 cell plate, 2,200 to 4,000 seeds per pound. The blue 48 cell plate, 2,200 to 1,400 seeds per pound. There is such thing now in the middle ground, the Kinsey Tan plate, which is 2,000 to 3,000 seeds per pound. For those guys who are struggling with the transition point between the black and blue plates, the tan plate's your answer. Final subject we're going to touch on today is, is closing. Um, successful closing, as we all know, means uh, no slotting, no air pockets, mellow path to the surface. I counted 47 different closing wheels, and I'm sure I missed some. Um, I always like to ask growers when we're speaking to them about this subject if there's an issue. I realize our neighbors all have different ones and, and we all wonder what's going on next door there, but we can create problems with, with these closing wheels as easily as we can solve them. Uh, no matter what system we're running, what wheel we're running, they all require maintenance. Uh, bearings must be free, uh, hardware must be tight, bushings must be tight. Each one of these wheels has a different spacing. The longer the fingers are here, the further apart the, the wheels need to be to keep them out of the seed trench. And often forgotten, I think, sometimes is centering. The reason that these have cams in, in the bushings and all these newer models is to center them. Um, I always recommend a scratch test. We've, always, we've all heard the joke about use your neighbor's cement, you know, but um, a scratch test with the seed blades on the cement in front of your shop is, is the quickest, easiest, and most accurate way to, to make sure that these are, are centered in the trench.